Hello everybody and welcome to another Weather Wednesday. My name is Elias here at the Space Foundation Discovery Center. And what I want to talk to you guys today is the three basic ingredients needed to uh, identify or forecast weather. And uh, what we have here behind me is science on a sphere. Um, what I want to do is just teach you a little bit about some weather basics. These are the basic principles that meteorologists use to forecast the weather. So what I would like to do is point out this really cool system that hit uh, the Midwest and the East Coast these last couple days. And I want to point out three basic factors of weather uh, formation. These three basic ingredients is heat, humidity, and pressure. First off, heat. That is the um, temperature or which is a measure of energy, heat energy, in the system or in the atmosphere. We're going to be experiencing that here in Colorado over the next uh, day or two where the temperature is going to drop quite a bit. So meteorologists look at temperature to see whether it's going to be uh, rainy or snowy or potential hail or whatever the different kinds of precipitation. And temperature is one of those really important uh, measuring uh, ingredients needed to look at weather. So as we, um, as we progress towards this next day, here in Colorado we're looking at possible snow. Uh, what's going to be important is how fast it's going to get here and how quickly the temperatures will drop. Um, kids here are kind of excited. Are we going to get a snow day tomorrow? Well, who knows? We're going to see how quickly that temperature, that, that heat uh, portion of, uh, of weather uh, happens. Next is humidity. That's the amount of moisture there is uh, available. And I want to see if I can bring up this image here and spin it around so that you guys can see the United States area right here. This is called precipitable water. This is the amount of moisture there is in the air, the potential. And here we have uh, yesterday, or uh, uh, looking at, uh, or two days ago, looking at the amount of moisture that was in the air. And you can see there's a lot of moisture, a lot of humidity around the uh, equator. And when that migrates up towards Colorado or towards wherever you live, if you get a, a, a significant amount of moisture up in the air, that's gonna contribute to precipitation. So those are two factors that meteorologists look at, heat and humidity. The next one is pressure. And that's, we're going back to um, the satellite here, the satellite image of the clouds. And you'll notice that clouds in the northern hemisphere rotate left in low pressure systems. So if you make a little L with your, with your hand, you can see um, that if it is rotating left, both the, both the word left and low pressure starts with the letter L. In the northern hemisphere, if it is rotating left, it is a low pressure system. And low pressure systems allow clouds to form. Okay? Clouds like low pressure. They don't like high pressure. So if you see a formation uh, in our satellite images rotating left, you have a low pressure system. And the stronger it rotates left, or the more tight, the more tight that rotation is, the stronger that system is. And so as the system, um, there is this uh, low pressure system as it went across the United States, see how tightly it was rotating, and that uh, spawned, it combined with the humidity coming from the Gulf of Mexico, and the change in temperature, the change in heat, as it was going on, and that spawned some, um, some strong thunderstorms, particularly in the Texas area. And so here we have the three ingredients working together in this system. And we have heat, our uh, temperature changes, the humidity or the moisture coming from the Gulf of Mexico, and we have that low pressure system. These are the three things meteorologists look for as they're forecasting things such as um, a possible snow event here in Colorado. Um, what I think might happen for Colorado and the Colorado Springs area is uh, we're probably going to get quite a bit of snow overnight. Uh, we're going to get rain turning into snow. 
But uh, all the research that we've seen is this uh, moisture, this precipitation is going to stop in the early morning hours. And so my guess, my hypothesis is maybe a two hour delay, we'll see. I hope this was uh, interesting to you. Um, if you have questions regarding these three basic ingredients or if you have any questions that you would like addressed here um, on Weather Wednesday, please um, put those in the comments section um, or in the Facebook, um, on our Facebook site, um, add those comments. I think we had one question that was uh, sent to us uh, overnight and that was by uh, Joyce. Joyce was saying, was asking, um, are there three ingredients in space weather? Now space weather um, is, uh, talks about the, um, the impact that the sun has on planets in, a, in the solar system. And there are several um, ingredients, several factors in space weather. Um, but I don't think we can, scientists can distill that down into three basic ingredients. So space weather has to do with uh, physics, with the science behind um, how the sun acts. And I think it would be great to do a future Weather Wednesday on space weather. What do you guys think? Should we do that? Why don't you post your suggestions in, uh, on, face, on our Facebook page? And uh, make sure to turn on your notifications um, for when we do these events live. We want to interact with you guys. We want to turn this into a fun experience for you guys. So if you live here in Colorado Springs, come on by the Space Foundation Discovery Center. If you don't, please uh, check out our website at discoverspace.org. And also throw us some ideas, throw us some questions on our Facebook site. We would be happy to address those um, during our next, uh, our future Weather Wednesdays. So that's all for today. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, we look forward to our next Weather Wednesday. Uh, follow us, um, turn on those notifications and follow us because we may be doing these at a slightly different time here in the future. So stay close attention as we um, learn more about, uh, about our world uh, on Science on a Sphere here. So thanks for joining me and uh, we'll talk to you again next time.